91.1 The Globe, top of the hour, 6 o'clock. This is your home for culturally progressive music, WGCS Goshen, 73 and hazy, out there on this beautiful Thursday afternoon. My name is Tyson. We're here in the studio, live in the studio with shiny, shiny black, Nate Butler, Amber Butler, Simon Hurst. Welcome to the show, everybody. Thanks for coming in. Thanks. Glad to be here. Well, you guys are here uh, as part of the promotion for your new album, Reverberations, uh, came out just recently, June 8th. Uh, congratulations, first of all, on accomplishing a big project like this. Um, but we're so excited to have you guys play some songs from it. Yeah, we're excited too. Well, let's talk about it first of all. Nate and Amber Butler, you guys are married. What is it like being in a band with your significant other? And what do your kids think of their parents being in a band? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. You want to answer first? <laughs> sure. Um... I think on the good side, we have always wanted to work together. It's mm -hmm. like best friends first, maybe, or whatever. But yeah, it, it is a lot when you do all the things together yeah. and we have to find w ways to leave room for each of us to be our own selves. And the kids, I mean, they, they would probably enjoy giving their own version of this interview. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, they're just hanging out in the background. But they do have fun with it, too. They do uh, complain on the regular, though. Dad. I've already heard this song like 400 <laughs> times. <laughs> Not a so, fan of all the practicing, maybe, because it's a little repetitive. Yeah, right, exactly. And while currently we're, we're remodeling our house, and so where we practice is kind of under their bedroom, mm. and so they can hear it as they're trying to listen to uh, Wings of Fire audiobooks, and, <laughs> and uh, we're down there banging away. And like, Dad, it's so loud. Stop. So, it only adds to the experience, I'm yeah, sure. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. Right. Well, Nate, you have done all the production for this record. Um, as somebody who spends a lot of time doing production for other people as well in various capacities, what is it like to do it for yourself, and how does that change your process at all? Um, that's an awesome question. Um, I think one of the challenges when uh, we're kind of doing it our uh, our own project, we have to um, we have a little more time to spread out. A lot of times, if a band comes to like my recording studio, it's like they book five days and they got to get their project done mm -hmm. in that time. Whereas for us, it's like, well, we're gonna do one day of this, and then we've got to go. Uh, work on our house and then right. we're, we've got a gig and then we, oh, wow, it's like five days later we're finally getting back to tr drum tracking, mm -hmm. you know, and so that, I think that's probably the biggest challenge, the the, the biggest advantage is I've had uh, a lot of other projects to practice on, so right. I feel like that helps um, me, helps guide me on what how to know when we've, when we've hit uh, good enough, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Nice. Well, Simon, let's talk about you real quick before we get into this first song. People who are in the area and go to live music definitely have seen you perform in a variety of groups, um, playing a variety of instruments. Today, you uh, are sitting here with a couple of keyboards in front of you. Normally, you also add some guitar to this band. Yeah. What is it like to kind of switch instruments and groups a lot, you know, and how does the different instruments affect your process in terms of preparing for a show? Yeah, I think um, one of the, the challenges of playing multiple instruments also is one of the benefits of it. It kind mm -hmm. of, because it's hard, and I've spent a lot of time practicing how to do a lot of things in a lot of different groups, I feel like that's a skill that I've built up yeah. and have gotten a lot of practice at mm -hmm. in the last... Um, year or so, year and a half, two years. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a, a thing that was, that's still a struggle to, to maintain all of the, mm -hmm. the sounds. And especially when we had a lot of chance to add things in the studio and add layers to this right. new shiny, shiny black record. Now it's like, Oh, can I have an extra pair of hands and maybe a couple extra arms too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to fill in all the other stuff. But also right. I like that. I like the challenge of it. So yeah. Yeah. Well, without any further ado, let's jump right into the first of three live tracks you're going to be playing. It's Shiny Shiny Black live on 91.1 The Globe. Uh, the first song is You Maybe off your new album, Reverberations, available wherever. Do uh, you want to say anything about this song before you jump right into it? I'll say a little. Uh, this song's actually, we, we co-wrote most of the record, uh, Nate and I and our friend Jonathan Ruel, um, which incidentally is another Goshen College alumni. Yeah. Uh, but he wrote this song, Jonathan wrote this song. 
and offered it to us. And we were like, yes, we would like to do this. Yeah. So, and it ended up the first track on the record. So, Let's get into it. You may be Shiny Shiny Black live on the globe. shiny shiny black live on the globe absolutely fantastic guys very very well done thank you let's uh let's take a moment to get um one of our uh extra special guests on this particular interview in uh david kendall a local artist who moonlights as the director of career networks at the college (laughs) uh did the album artwork uh for the new album reverberations that's of course available anywhere you get your music. Um, so let's talk about this collaboration. Was this one that had been kind of a long time in the making or did it come up uh, maybe a little bit unexpectedly? I, uh, I think I we've know. all talked about the idea for years. Yeah. But, yeah. 
We um, did. We just seized the moment, and we were like, this is the one, Dave. <laughs> so are you ready? It dream, I think, didn't it? <laughs> it's something like that. <laughs> he said, we finally want you to do some art for our album. Yeah, I know the collaboration is, I think, a, a long time in the waiting, and it was really cool to get the ball rolling. I think it, we started back in February talking, and mm -hmm. uh, the collaboration sort of started as, hey, what is, what is the artwork going to look like? What's the aesthetic? What are the mm -hmm. themes? And I think, mm -hmm. you know, the, oh, to be on the nose about it, I think the theme was reverberation, and so um, that was fun to play yeah. with. Was this the first album artwork specifically that you've ever done? No, no, I, I've, I've done a number of them. Yeah. Uh, I've done, I think, three of Steel Wheel, three of the Steel Wheels okay, albums. Wow. Um, did some for some bands out of Indy. Uh, the Goldmine Pickers, Nate was oh, playing yeah, around with sure. a, a Goldmine Pickers song a little, few minutes ago. Um, so no, this wasn't my first. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to think of others. I've done uh, a really fun one for a guy named Brian Russell Cook out of South Bend who was in the Goldmine Pickers. Uh, that was an underwater llama. That was part of the, the lookbook that we started for this project. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Very cool. Why don't you describe, this is radio after all, so why don't mm -hmm. you describe the artwork a little bit for the people and then talk, you know, a little bit about the inspiration and how it came to look, how it looks. Yeah, well, I'm bringing the second iteration of the piece here with me today. It's on, for those of you who can see it on camera. Is that is this coming out later? Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So this is the. I realized I brought the wrong painting. So I started the. <laughs> this idea kind of started as I'm going to just start painting stuff on these cradled clay boards, and uh, this is the second one. And so what you see on the album cover is. I tried to use the idea of reverberation, and so I took the, the guitar chord or mm -hmm. the, any of the chords and just sort of used this spiral sort of pattern. And in that pattern, you'll see things that kind of resemble old-timey microphones with satellite dishes yeah. coming out of them. Um, there's a bird who has this strange antenna crown that's sending reverberations out into the universe. And then the thing on the third thing, I don't think we know what that is yet. I think that's yet to be discovered, isn't it? <laughs> um, it's kind of a... I'm sure the audience will let us know. <laughs> I, I'm trying to be as descriptive as possible here. So this is a, a, a microphone knobby thing that has circular uh, nodes spitting dashes into a portal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, that's a great way to describe it, absolutely. I, I really liked it when I saw it initially because I was like, oh, this is like a piece of artwork that I would like hang in my home, you know? It's it's Thank you. very well done, and I think it... It definitely fits the vibe of the songs on this record. One, one of the, th well, thank you very much. And one of the things that I was hoping for was, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this coming out on vinyl because I'm just oh, yeah. picturing people go perusing the bins and going, mm -hmm. oh, shiny, shiny, I think I've heard of them, but the album artwork's awesome, so I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that was really the, the yeah. goal for this. That's Truly. cool. Simon, yeah. is there any plans to get this album artwork, maybe a tattoo or something? You know, it could be, it could be cool. You know, now that you mention it, I probably am going to make some plans. So I think, I think you should. Yeah. We'll I definitely think follow up with you about that. For I me. think. The, uh, <laughs> Would the, you trust me to give the tattoo? It's already. Oh, there we go. It's yes. already made it onto some of our wearables, like a T-shirt. Yeah. Is art themed, like the bird They're that's really in cool. the center of the album cover. So. People definitely That's the beginning, check those out at some of your upcoming live shows. I'm yeah. sure, mm -hmm. very very cool stuff. All right, well, David, thank you so much for uh, stopping in and talking about this. Thanks for letting the visual artists join the musical artist. I appreciate it. Thank you Absolutely. guys. Absolutely. Well, if you uh, are you know coming back to this later, of course, this will be posted on our YouTube channel as this was alluded to. There are some cameras rolling. You'll be able to see it there. Of course, you can check out our Instagram, Shiny Shiny Black's Instagram. There's a lot of places to find the artwork and check it out. Let's get back into the second song now. Uh, Ready to Start Looking is the second song. Anything you guys want to say about it or jump in? Um, yeah, th this song, um, I was uh, working with a friend of mine, uh, Caroline Cotter, who's a, a great uh, singer-songwriter and uh, was, was running production for a show. And um, I'd run like a really hard week and... Um, there was a little break in the afternoon, so I had the opportunity to, to take a nap. And when I, when I woke up, it was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and the, uh, my phone, phone was just blowing up. And it was the day that um, the El Paso, Texas uh, shootings had happened. 
and I I know that that music has a role in the world when things like that happen and um, I I you know it's really easy to feel helpless when that mm-hmm. kind of stuff is going on um, and I just felt like man I can at least like kind of write a song about it and give people something to think about or a way or a place to put their emotions or their their feelings about this um and uh so yeah here yeah. it is ready to start looking shiny shiny black live on the globe i woke up in the afternoon a pastor texas was in the news In the Walmart on the floor It looks like war where there was no war Oh my God, here we go again There is no why, there's only when Ready to start looking shiny, shiny black live on the globe. They're here in the studio. My name is Tyson. We got Nate Butler, Amber Butler, and Simon Hurst. Another brilliant song. That was absolutely incredible. Thank you guys so much for being here and, and sharing this uh, music with us. And of course, their new album, Reverberations, is out now uh, wherever you get your music. Um, we got a couple more things to talk about. Another song. So if you're listening, don't go anywhere. Um, I want to talk about Jay Lapp, the mandolinist. Um, yeah. from Steel Wheels, who's featured on a couple tracks in this album. When in the process did you realize, I think we might need some mandolin, I should call up Jay? Um, 
Well, it was more when in the process did we realize that we couldn't keep adding things. I think uh, <laughs> we really wanted to uh, bring a lot of friends into the process, but we just also had hit a place where we we needed to finish the record. Mm-hmm. But Jay was was uh, uh, kind enough while well, he was off the road uh, uh, for a couple of weeks with the Steel Wheels to take the tracks and give them a listen. And I've I've known Jay for for a really long time, and and uh, we've always kind of like with Dave, we've talked about collaborating. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think as a band, we've tried really hard to collaborate with a lot of people. We have a, a Josh Cooper sticker. Also, um, my friend Ben did the painting on the last record. Um, you know, we, we, we really want to collaborate with as many artists and, and as we can, but, um, yeah, anyways, Jay was really great and super gracious and very encouraging. And, uh, so it was it was amazing. I I don't know. We we try to incorporate as many kind of folk instruments yeah. into our weird alternative music, and so <laughs> um, uh, that's kind of part of our thing. So there's always been banjo on every record, and I just I thought it was it was a perfect opportunity. Uh, we had a little little bit of resources to yeah. work with uh, to bring Jay in. So yeah. um, it's been a goal. <laughs> nice. It sounds <laughs> it sounds like the adage "good is better than" or "done is better than perfect." played a little bit of the role of a role in the creation of this album um i don't know a single project that i've ever been a part of uh that that hasn't come to play at some point yeah um at some point you just have to take what you've got and push it out into the world and and uh hope that it it f- is valuable to people um and uh sometimes if you don't quite nail it you you know to me it's it's a there's the this story about a professor, a ceramics professor, who tells half the class to to make a perfect yeah, pot, yeah. right, and the other half of the class to make as many as they can. Right. And of course, I think we can all predict who, wh- wh- what the better out, which half had the better outcome, right? right? So, uh, part of my, uh, I guess, artistic mindset is to try to to uh, do projects as many and as often as mm-hmm. possible, and hope that in the process I get better. Yeah, uh, with practice. Well, so. that's actually an absolutely perfect segue to something else that I wanted to talk about that you brought up a couple of times. So you guys are definitely not afraid of taking on projects. In the middle of all of this, you're also remodeling your house, which is a big project. I wonder if you guys want to say a, a little bit about what that entails as well. You mentioned uh, having to switch where you practice your music, uh, much to the annoyance of your children, maybe. <laughs> right. They kind of grew up with it, so yeah. they understand. But yeah. Um, so Nate had another season of his life where he helped build custom homes. So we do have mm-hmm. some skills in this area that kind of help make it not feel quite as crazy. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, we took on a 1878 uh, farmhouse project. Dang. Like just over two years ago, actually. <laughs> but we haven't been living there all that time, but we are living in the house now and mm-hmm. still continue to renovate. But it was a multifamily property and... We're bringing it back to single family and eventually want to run more of our music stuff out of there. We do do some stuff on the fly, um, but it's a really beautiful, you know, historic brick, like yeah. original timbers. And I mean, the way it's built is amazing. So we feel really uh, like it's a special project to help yeah. preserve and kind of take care to the next era, whoever ends up with it after us. So, Yeah. I also wanted to speak to kind of the philosophy behind that because I yeah. think as as uh, artists, but also just as trying to be good people in the world, I think we've come become big fans of of things that people make that have intrinsic value. Hmm. Um, so um, there, I've in my career as a construction person, there was a lot of buildings that were made maybe even in the 1960s that were being torn down because the way that they were built was done poorly. Um, uh, And uh, unfortunately, most of those were government buildings where fiscal conservatism had Mm -hmm. uh, wreaked its havoc uh, in being very short-sighted and making things of value that last. And um, the house that we're working on was clearly not built with that mindset. It was clearly built to be there and be there for a really long time. And 
because of that, um, I think that we really feel like it's important to try to uh, take that and run with it and yeah. pass that on to people who are coming uh, in future generations and hopefully have something good and beautiful in the world that's still valuable. So that's actually a big part of why we took the project yeah. on. So That's really cool. Simon, one last question for you. Nate yeah. set you up well for this question. <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, you're a part of a lot of musical projects. Mm -hmm. What makes this one Shiny Shiny Black special? Yeah, I would say a lot of the same things that have been touched on throughout of this interview and stuff. Like, part of what makes Shiny Shiny Black so special for me is the people. Um, and the music we make isn't just, oh, we're going to go make some rock and roll music. Mm -hmm. There's... We do make some rock and roll music sometimes. It's just rowdy and fun, but also <laughs> Nothing it's... Nothing wrong with that. Right, yeah. And it's also about the people. The music has meaning. There's mm -hmm. a purpose to it, and I just am super happy to be a part of it. So, yeah. Well, you guys got one more song, uh, and then we'll come back and we'll do a little bit of plugs maybe. But the next song, last one, When I Wasn't Looking. Uh, anything you guys want to preview the song a little bit? Yeah. Uh, this one, uh, like... You know, everybody has a writing process, and some of our ways we like to do it is get away for a few days sometimes. And, like, this song started out of one of those retreats, which was just, like, hanging out at a friend's house in the middle of nowhere in Iowa. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we got a little drum machine beat going that is, did make it on the record, I think, and a little riff. And then eventually I went and, like, scribbled in my notebook. And, you know, anyway, that's kind of where this song emerged from so and sometimes it takes a while like they the chorus was there for a long time and there were no verses so mm. that was one of the things jonathan ended up helping us with later so nice yeah. well when i wasn't looking shiny shiny black live on the globe
Spaces for lost days and fall to repose. Unwind the beginning. I'm moving my tired hands back and forth. Two, three, four. When I Wasn't Looking, Shiny Shiny Black, live on the globe. Tyson, we're here with Nate Butler, Amber Butler, and Simon Hurst. Thank you guys so much for coming in today. It was absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah. Take a minute to plug a little bit here. We got Reverberations, of course. That's the album. It's out now. Go stream it. Go buy it. Go download it, all that stuff. Uh, ShinyShinyBlack.com, at ShinyShinyBlack on Twitter, at Shiny underscore Shiny underscore Black on Instagram. Right. And do uh, you guys have any shows coming up that we should let the people know about um not at the moment but i did want to mention uh one last thing yeah uh, we uh i used to work a lot at ignition and one of the things that i would hear from people who came through is that and they're just you know it's nothing like sitting down on an album you know let's put an album on and just sit there <laughs> and listen to the whole thing through and nobody does that anymore and so uh i've heard that from from people of all generations and so if you buy the physical CD, it's different than the streaming versions. Right. And there I wanted go, yeah. to put that out there because it's actually designed to be like one continuous mm -hmm. listening mm -hmm. experience as opposed to, you know, all of the streaming right. versions of the songs have clean breaks between them, right, whereas right. on the record they actually... So just to, if you're interested in that kind of an experience, uh, the CD is different. Same with, yeah. the, with what would be a vinyl too, which we've... There was a little bit of alluding to. Is yes. that coming out at some point There's in the hopes. future? We don't have vinyl, we, but it's we'd aspirational. Love, aspirational. We'd so love to do a pre-order like, and, and get that rolling. It's like yeah. David said. Someday you're going to be at Ignition, as you mentioned, flipping through, and the artwork will come up, and you'll know when you see it. Yeah, for sure. Well, thanks for coming in, guys. We're going to kick it back into more of the culturally progressive music. Keep it locked. This is 91.1 The Globe.